Food and water. Of all the resources on Earth, these two are the most vital for survival. Abundance of food and water allows civilizations to grow and thrive, while a scarcity relegates people to spending their waking hours simply trying to get enough to survive. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the current world population is estimated to be around 7,400,000,000 at the time of making this video. The question we're going to consider is whether or not we're running out of food to feed the growing world population. The majority of populations suffering from world hunger are those that live in developing countries. As of 2015, there were approximately 156 million children in the world that suffer from stunted growth due to malnutrition. And that's just one of the potential complications that can arise in areas without sufficient access to food. The root cause of all such conditions is hunger. We often hear the term world hunger in the media, and we understand the general idea, but what does it really mean? How do we define the term hunger as it applies to entire populations? We typically define hunger as a strong desire or need for food, or the painful or uncomfortable sensations caused by its absence. World hunger is slightly different, defined as the want or scarcity of food in the aggregate of world populations. Unsurprisingly, the main cause of world hunger is poverty. Many people around the world simply don't have sufficient income to buy nutritious food directly, or to purchase land on which to grow their own food. This poverty has many causes. We'll take a brief look at four of them. First, conflict. In many African and Middle Eastern countries, war and violence prevent people from having a settled lifestyle, often forcing them to move around to avoid danger. In Pakistan alone in 2012, over 25 million people were considered conflict-affected persons. The next cause of poverty is the rapidly expanding world population. This is the one that causes the most alarm for much of the civilized world, in no small part thanks to the media. The concern is that soon there will simply be too many mouths to feed and not enough food to go around. While largely blown out of proportion, the growing world population does indeed make it harder to feed everyone. Number three is food and agricultural policies. Some countries simply lack the infrastructure or resources to run large farms on which to grow food for their citizens. Other countries simply have no desire to eliminate hunger among their people. One resource, called the Hansi Index, measures African nations' commitment to ending hunger. Take Sudan for example, which is number 45 out of 45, making it the very worst in terms of commitment. Sudan only spends 2.2% of its total public spending on agriculture. Finally, the fourth main cause of world hunger is climate change. According to worldhunger.org, climate change is increasingly viewed as a current and future cause of hunger and poverty. Increasing drought, flooding, and changing climactic patterns requiring a shift in crops and farming practices that may not be easily accomplished are three key issues. Of course, this doesn't answer the question, are we running out of food? Despite what you might expect, no, we're not. Another statistic from worldhunger.org states that, for the world as a whole, per capita food availability has risen from about 2,200 calories per person per day in the early 1960s to 2,790 calories per person per day in 2006 to 2008, while developing countries even recorded a leap from 1,850 calories per person per day to over 2,640. This means that yes, the world does in fact produce enough food to feed everyone, it's just a matter of providing that food to affected areas. In fact, the number of undernourished people in the world has gone down in developing countries from 34% in the mid-1970s to just 15% three decades later. Child malnutrition has also decreased significantly since 1990. According to World Bank, the stunting prevalence of children under 5 has gone down from 39.6% in 1990 to 23.2% in 2015, and that number has been steadily decreasing every year. Of course, while this is undoubtedly good news, there are still a huge number of people suffering from hunger and malnutrition around the world. What are we doing as a global society to fix these problems? In 2015, the 193 member states of the United Nations agreed on the significant goal of totally ending poverty and world hunger by 2030. Their main means of achieving this monumental goal include doubling the agricultural production of small farmers, increasing access to food in war-torn areas and brokering for peace, investing in agriculture and infrastructure, and adapting to climate change. Starting with the first point, the plan to double agricultural production might not be what you think, According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, if women farmers had the same access to farming resources as men, the number of hungry people in the world would be reduced by 150 million. The UN plans to provide all small-scale food producers, especially women and small family farms, equal access to land, tools, seeds, pesticides, credit, and markets to sell their produce. This plan alone is suspected to increase crop yields by 200%. Next, increasing access to food. In places like Syria and many African countries, volunteer and humanitarian groups are finding it increasingly difficult to connect with the affected populations. 
Destroyed roads, non-functioning refrigeration, and violent disruption are significant roadblocks to feeding the hungry. One current temporary solution is to have aid workers deliver vouchers instead of actual food, which can be taken to local markets in exchange for various goods. This makes deliveries easier and safer, having to deliver food only to central hubs rather than many individual villages and camps. It also provides some amount of safety from robbery, as the vouchers have no monetary value. Of course, the only long-term solution will be to find a way to resolve the many conflicts causing the disruption. Investing in agriculture and infrastructure is a hugely promising endeavor. Research by the FAO has shown that investing in agriculture is up to five times more effective at reducing hunger and poverty than investing in any other sector. In mid-2015, the FAO, the World Food Program, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development presented a report that suggested that a $105 billion investment in irrigation and food processing infrastructure could very possibly close the hunger gap. One IFAD member said during the presentation, We won't see gains in reducing poverty and hunger unless we seriously invest in rural people. Given the right kinds of tools and resources, small-scale agricultural producers and rural entrepreneurs can transform struggling communities into thriving places. And finally, adapting to climate change. The numbers are alarming. If we don't adapt to the changing climate, erosion, salinification, and desertification will raise childhood hunger and malnutrition by up to 20% by 2050. The irony of the situation is that livestock used for food, especially cows, are one of the biggest if not the biggest contributing factor to man-made climate change. A shift away from large-scale livestock cultivation could mitigate the effects of climate change significantly over the course of several years or decades. The UN's main plan for adaptation is to preserve the biological diversity of crops and livestock, and ensure the use of sustainable farming practices. According to the FAO, up to 75% of crop genetic diversity is already destroyed, 22% of animal breeds are at risk, and more than half of fish stocks are fully exploited. Adapting to climate change is one of the most critical steps we can take to ending world hunger. That's all well and good at the governmental level, but there are other options for us as individuals. If you'd like to help end world hunger, consider donating to one of the charities listed in the description. For the cynics among us, no, I don't make any money off those links. They're simply there because I'm certain there are people watching this video who want to make a difference. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest content. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.